fast and it's loud and uh, shouldn't have any meaning. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said. <laughs> This summer, Kaput decided to head north for inspiration, visiting Flow Festival in Helsinki. We caught up with two very different performers at this year's Bash to get their views on the creative process and the life of today's music makers. I'm hoping to get the money pressure out of the picture, so I, I try to, you know, get by with less. So because I don't, I think if you have to make money, it's always more or less a compromise, and, and it's really hard to compromise something you really love. And, uh, it's also hard to say if you compromise. You know, you can cheat yourself so fast. It's not really that you know what you're compromising if you're doing stuff for money. It's just like that. It's like well, it's a work. I mean, that's another. You can put another word, word yeah. to it. It's work. Yeah. I don't like work, like that sense. I don't like to do work you with like something. Work. Yeah, but yeah, but not with work aesthetics. You know, like that you have to work. If it's if you like doing something, it's it's different. It's a passion or pleasure or something. But right. passion. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but if you get into something, you work 24/7 for like months. Yeah, but not because you have to, it's no. because you want to. Yeah. But the work to me is like you have to do touring so you can get your yeah. pay or whatever, flat and stuff and that's something I, I always had a big issue with that. So now basically everything you get is from traveling. And traveling is disruptive. I mean, Especially where we are living, yeah. you know, it's like, like it's, you don't want to go. I, my it's molecules so go like this if I have to go, like, I don't want to, it's, it's not okay. It, you, we do this 20 years. It's That's really right. tough to go all the time and then for like, and then you know what happens when you travel. Shit but it becomes, it becomes really also like with routine and like you see people doing it just for money. And it's really like, it's this sport and competition and hustle of like who gets bookings and, and the music is really, like I said, like, why people do certain kind of music is a lot to relate to, to relate to, relating to the fact that you get bookings, and I, that's something like it distorts your inspiration also. Like uh, it's more like a business. It's not art form. It's, it's actually. Yeah, last time I played a year ago, yeah. uh, live show. So maybe I, it's something you have to do once a year just to come out of the closet or something. And here, I've been coming here so often, it's nearby. They pay decent money and it's kind of... But I, yeah. They don't ask me to do... Uh, they allow me to do whatever I want. And, but I don't want to anymore participate in this. Like, I also... To make money from music becomes more and more again. Maybe it goes in waves. I had the same, maybe... 10 years ago and actually then I sold my studio and everything and, but then I picked it up again I don't know if it will happen again but just too much dissatisfaction on, on don't relate to the scene trying to maybe find some more meaningful more inspiring surrounding to do work if I have to do work and <laughs> Mental support. You mean like tonight I'm gonna do visuals? I yeah. have worked hard for them. <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah. She works hard. I wanna make. Um, I found some interest to do visuals because um, working with audio now for 20 years is cool. But it was kind of nice to do something totally new. So I'm really, I really care for it and try to figure it out. Playing because I don't know what he's playing. He doesn't 
give me anything and I have no idea. <laughs> I heard now in a soundcheck few tracks I know from the earlier Repati releases, so I was glad to hear something I know. <laughs> but I have no... He just said it's fast and it's loud and... <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want any meaning. <laughs> he said so. <laughs> Are like since 10, 15 years playing shows, I don't think we need to discuss anything anymore. No, there's a certain. We've played lots of tours, you know. Like invisible, like uh, just you know, the things that need to be said and stuff like that. And that. Because we live on an island doesn't mean that we don't know, we know everything. Maybe we have some, even more time to look at, at what's coming out than people who are in a city because they have to go from A to B. We, are, we have a fast internet and we are in the woods and we can have any information which is online as well. I listen every, you know, I, basically, I still read whatever I check what Pitchfork is saying and I have title and I listen to all the records. Me too. Just for analysis, or like, uh, you know, let's say, uh, both from fan perspective and from professional perspective. So I, I am, uh, especially when it comes to hip hop and urban music and stuff. So I, I know what's going on. So I, I haven't given up. On it. Welcome to this concert of the music of Steve Reich. Uh, my name is Tim Furchin, and uh, I was asked to kind of put these pieces together and um, thought about it for quite a while. Uh, what I didn't want to do was to uh, put the pieces that everyone knows. Uh, I played with uh, the Reich Ensemble starting in 1973 up until somewhere in the 90s. So I managed to come across a lot of these pieces uh, during those years. And I thought for a change it would be nice to put on some of the pieces that are not really played anymore uh, and some of the pieces that are played very rarely. Uh, for instance, the phase patterns, the pieces, piece on the four organs here, uh, as far as I know, I might be wrong here, it's never been performed here in Finland. My feeling about this music it is, maybe this sounds terrible, but I like the music as pure as possible. I, I don't want any emotion in it. He doesn't either. I don't think there are no dynamics. Maybe there, there might be in these newer pieces, but in the older pieces, there's no dynamics, there's no expression, there are no retardandos, there are no accelerandos, and, and uh, the best performance of these pieces is when they sound like a machine. Amazing that a pop festival understands that part of the audience, you know, listens to things that are actually very similar. Yeah. You know, the most experimental crowd, let's say. But they know that there is there are similar things coming from the academic or whatever classical yeah. music field. So it's pretty natural, but pretty brave, of yeah. course, to do something like that. But the, I mean, the, the idea of this concert for me was just, I, I really wanted people to see where this stuff is coming from because yeah. you listen to the beauty of things like 18 musicians and it didn't start there at all. The, the early music is really ugly. I mean, the, 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 that organ piece has this cluster of, it's like, it, I think it's only, the, it's like a C, D, F, a v, D, E, F sharp, and G. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and 
I mean, <laughs> four guys you know, grinding that away, and, and and we used to do it like really loud. I mean, you know, the, the, when we played it, we, it was really loud. And in those days, people were not used to hearing that, nor are they anymore. I mean, people don't hear this kind of music anymore. And that's really why I wanted to wanted to do some of those old pieces that that people could actually hear where this music started from and not just think, oh boy, you know, you turn on the television, what do you hear? You hear Steve Reich, you know, commercials. I mean, all that stuff, this stuff you hear with marimbas and stuff on commercials and mm. uh, not just on television, it's all... It's a motif. Yeah, it's, it's just stolen from that. Yeah. And everybody thinks, well, that music is so beautiful. But in reality, the, the, the early stuff was anything but beautiful. It was pretty ugly. The other two pieces uh, are in, they work in a, such a way that, that, that all the musicians have a different downbeat to the measure. And you get there, as I explained, you know, during the concert by, by slowly speeding your, the, the, the identical pattern that you're playing with somebody next to you. You speed your pattern up and so you're in front of him. Um, so that creates a whole, you know, a new rhythmical and a, and, a, and a different melodic thing. That is unbelievably difficult to do because musicians, first of all, the guy who you're playing with, as you speed up, he'll usually want to come with you because yeah. you, you know you, you have this, this normal thing to just stay together. So he has to learn how to stay there and this guy has to be able to go ahead and know by looking or listening when he's arrived because what your hands are doing and what's coming into your ear are completely different, and it is very uh, disassociating. You you can you, you you literally as you're playing along, your hands just go like this because you, you know the the audio and the visual thing don't hook up. Yeah. So it's a matter of really learning to concentrate, and you can only do that over over like a long period of time. great that we got a chance to do it I mean I've always loved to do this stuff and I always love to put those kind of things on you know these kind of pieces I, I mean I just I, I'm happy when people want to do it mm -hmm. and he was you know Libra was always up for things like this so so it was, it was for me it was really really a treat that the, the flow festival took it oh. 